do is shoot off in here now. And trimming, then, you know, we'll probably just put a pair of screws on the front. And we'll put a slide shoot on it. Well, and I'll admit I'm not a tech company. I'm not a tech company. Explain a racetrack pony to us to come uh, out on the racetrack. Well, whenever you go to the race, you see a horse leading another horse at the racetrack. This is the horse leading that one. All right. So we got the, the shoes off, you know, I'll kind of move it, obviously not real full speed, but, but we'll go through this kind of, kind of shooting, because again, everybody thinks that we want shoes take it forever, but they're not too, too time consuming, especially if you want I'm really hoping if, if we're live, I hope Dustin Franklin's watching. He loves a stall jack. Two, two different feet. This one's more, more upright. 
slightly smaller, a little thinner, thinner here, but a relatively nice shape already. So we'll just pick it in Correct pockets. Not that you want to over trim the frog by any means, but I like to have, have that open on either side of the, the frog. You know, and, and go on the obviously the first principle is a clean and dry, dry foot. So today we're going to have a, a clean foot. I don't know how dry it's going to get. Yeah. Uh, I, I do like to clean up the back half of the foot. You can see the, the bruising and stuff in here. I think just leaving too much. Too much hoof, it's kind of pulled it over. Open it up. Oh, my goodness. So we'll just level him up a bit. Go ahead and just like if you were going to gonna nail him up, we'll start to carve or cut a, a nice shaping. Try to push this quarter transition point up and do the same thing to the other side. So again, so the, the reason originally, you know, we were thinking we might direct blue on in series one one, but right here is a perfect, perfect example of why I probably stay away from the, the direct blue on this little guy. You know, not, not that you couldn't by any means, but you know, obviously he's already got some heel bruising. He's got this suspicious area right here. So putting glue over that is, is just asking for, for trouble. So, I mean, yeah, no, we could, we could prep them, we could ride all these little things, so if I get everything perfect, or, or we can cheat and just indirectly do it, meaning that the series one, all the glue will be on, on the outside, so we won't have quite as much, much fear. Several other shoes could do the, could do the same thing. Wait till get done. I don't know if anybody, if everybody can see that kind of twist to his foot, but everybody see, look. So all those things usually indicate to me that he needs more shoe here. And this lever needs to be be reduced. It's not the right. come back and have a, a lot of pigment through their soul. But I don't know that I've ever seen it on the wall. That'd be cool. Yeah. I know, I'll get it shaped up and then uh, so again just a normal trim, normal everything is just Instead of nailing a shoe on, we're gonna we're gonna glue it on. Ready? So if you guys have any questions, just just let me know. I'll admit I don't usually talk when I shoe horses. There's nothing you can do about me. Oh no, he was shovel 
Oh, no, the other king? Oh, yeah, no, I'll hang out all the time. Honestly, half the time, it's the reason I, I use these a lot where I live, just like the radiographs and the shoes you see in the pre ones, they're all short shot. They have scoot heels and things, and it's, I promise it's, I mean, hell, that, that one's mine. That's, that's short shot. Like, I mean, it, where, where we live in Southwest Virginia, it's just, it's not conducive to keeping shoes on. And, and I find myself having to compromise fit pretty frequently. You know, if it's a disease pathology or a confirmation or a horse that's gonna gonna suffer from being able to compromise shoe fit just to keep shoes on, then I mean that's one of the reasons why I glue a lot of a lot of shoes on. It's just simply so I can fit how I want, not have to worry about the security. Because again, I in where I live I can convince people that it's worth the extra 100, 125, 350 bucks to have them glued on, but I can't convince them to, you know level their pasture, not turn out all the horses, or, you know, small individual turnout, or any, anything else. I can't seem to alter how they, they manage their horses, but if I find myself about to compromise on fit, I know that it's going to hurt, hurt or bother the horse or not allow it to perform as well, then I keep this in the back of my mind, because you can fit long and full and wide, and your shoe security is, is far greater in these than that ones. And I'll admit, I shoe a lot of horses with half inch thick hopeful that are glued up just for, just because it comes down too thick. You know, and the, the picture I showed you, I mean, they're, they're not guys that don't know how the shoe should be fit. They just can't. Me, personally, I don't think it does anything to the wall. So, so in my mind, if you put glue on a properly prepped, healthy hoof wall, I, they come back, you, I peel this off, and it looks just like this. No, no hoof wall, no nothing. I mean, I can show you the picture. You put it on, a foot that's not properly prepped, or you put it on weak or diseased or deteriorated hoof wall, and oh yeah, it's it's going to get worse or or better. Yeah, it's just going to come off with with the glue on it. Did the deprivement for you when you peel the cuff off? Uh, so you got you got to put it on on healthy wall. But I don't think glue harms it at all on on the outer wall. Now that being said, you start putting glue. What you got, Tony? In, in areas like that, yeah, oh, this will, that'll get worse, this will get worse, this will likely abscess. Well, I abscess before we leave here today. Oh, oh you're good. Don't let her know. <laughs> but, but you can see, I mean, this, that horse was in an SX-7-1, and I'll be able to, to get this guy on, and I'll, I don't know if, it, if it'll show up to you guys, but hell, I'll fit it like that, fold the cuff under, and then bell it up with glue. So. It'll be long, fit, wide, and full, but it won't really have an edge anywhere to to catch. And so again, I mean, I can talk about doing that, you know, and everybody that messes with glue can't, but when, it, when you go to demo, you won't really see it. Like, so those are the, the nuances of like, when we wrap it up and move glue, like I'll pull glue into that area. The way we wrap will be done in a specific way to keep it into a nice, nice bell shape. And you can absolutely fit long and full and, these guys. So. We'll get it closed up. Luckily, they picked up a horse's foot with, I mean, that's a nice little round shape. It's easy to fit with with whatever you want, but I'll fit tight medially, or, you know, tight ish fit, just like I would normally, but leave extra laterally. So, this, I have no idea if my shoe's level yet or not, but if anybody wants to to feel this, see how it's fit, feel free to. Because once I get glue on it, I don't think you'll be able to appreciate how full it is to the to the lateral side. So if you had it full on the outside, yep. you have to fill that gap with glue, right? Mm -hmm. Cuff no, 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 no. Cuff goes against the wall regardless. In my eyes. Cuff against the wall, and then you put glue on the cuff. It'll, that'll all get filled in with glue. I promise when you see it, you won't be able to tell where where it begins and where it ends. But if you but if you have a big gob of glue and then your cuff, that that's pretty weak. You want to get cuff clear against the wall and then glue on the outside. You don't want the it cycling. So if you ever you ever build yourself a patch, what you want to do if you think you want to glue mini like this or even patch cracks is is grab yourself a couple pieces of fabric, you know, and then just gom some glue in it, kind of. 
make it kind of level and lay it over there and then take two and saturate them really well and then press out all the glue and make it nice and flat and let it set up and then pick them up and feel the, feel the difference. One will be markedly more rigid than the other. You know? And you can do any number of things. So just because I'm going to fit it full, put the fa fabric against the, the foot and fill it in with the glue, that's just, that's a product of, of me, like where I live and all the eventing horses I used to do. I'm, I'm used to gluing up heels, like making a nice bell. I'm used to not leaving leaving an edge. But nothing says you can't cut this fabric away and box and save it off and make it look just like a normal shoe, just it's glued on instead of nail on. But I but again doing it a bunch of eventing horses, I spent oh, you know, Friday night, Saturday mornings, that was my, my job. Go around, go up heels every morning, then take them off Saturday night. Sound good? All right, so that's it. Check, everybody get to feel it that wants to? Right, let's go mess up Pat's grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Inside's higher than the outside. It's just something I always, always do. But when you're grinding these or the series one shoes, you just can't let them get too hot, um, or they or it will separate the aluminum and the blue. So again, if it's somebody else's grinder, a brand new belt is awesome. Just change them out all you want. The the Cubitron belt makes a nice one that will just hog this metal off without without heating it up. But but if you try to put a roll like this in with a 100 grit belt, it's going to get too hot for this. You want something that's just going to take it off. So, so a real low grip. And then, again, I'm not really sure how these are built if the blue is like put on by somebody, but it's very common that you have blue sticking out beyond the shoe. So I just round off the check to where it looks like a shoe, right? And if you need to cheat and move that, that weight bearing surface over the father, you can grind. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you can, you can grind on these. I'll admit, you're only limited by your imagination. I mean, I've taken these things, made heart bars out of them, straight bars, egg bars. You can put, you know, hospital plate on the big clog type effect. You can make lateral ligament inserts. You can, you can do any number of things. Pads that slide in and out of here, so you can take them on and off. You can put heel plates. You can do. You can do anything you want to with them. If you're creative enough, you just can't make well. You know. But, all right, so relatively level. Get rid of my little shoe, mess it up. And then I do like uh, a hook buffer for for prepping the feet. Again, if they're, they're sopping wet, you can do anything from torch them to acetone them to buff them. Do, do all sorts of things. I would tell you if you if you know you're going to glue up a horse, just ask him to leave it in a stall the, the night before, you know, or the day before you get there. You know, I, I think there's nothing wrong with leaving a horse in a stall. Uh oh. Yeah. But but you do ideally want to glue to to as dry a foot as as you possibly can. I know, earlier, Pat, I made the comment that nobody would watch a little kid get killed without saying something. You're the only one that did. You only learned through pain. Okay. So in buffing, everybody does it differently, but I turn it to where it rolls up to me, and it, I can keep it away from the the hair, but it's pushing up to me the whole time. And right back here is the place that most people forget. So get behind the the heel, prep the whole outer outer wall.
But, and then I don't know, for, for you guys that felt my foot while we were, we were fitting, you see how it doesn't come down to a sharp edge. Everything stays kind of rounded off. That's the other thing. You don't want to put a real sharp hoof in the fabric or it, it will cut it. So it's not, not quite rolled off like you would a barefoot horse, but, but hell, it, it could be. You know, but definitely knock off the, the sharp edge probably more so than you would normally. And so if you stay clean, that's all I do. So that's my, my prep work to go on through it. Party line is, you know, wrap the, the distal limb and, and uh, cuff flags or vet wrap or something to, to keep it clean. But, but you'll see, once, once you get used to it, they're, they're pretty easy to keep clean. I'll keep my left hand clean. My right hand will have glue on. Okay, but if you're worried at all, protect the foot or, or the, the horse and then double glove. So I forget that. So I don't know how much uh, I've ever done. Yeah. Yes, it's my first time. I did. Actually, I can't wait to get the hinds. One of the first shoes I've ever nailed on. Yeah. So we'll take the glue and then, again, we didn't talk too much about the, the polymeth and the tech release, but they, they usually come in two, two speeds, a fast and a slow. The colder day, the faster you want to set up. Again, the more familiar you are with it, you'll find yourself uh, you can't seem to get glue to set up fast enough. When you first start, holy shit, you don't have time to get anything done. Uh, <laughs> this, this is my shit. All right, and so we'll take, uh, again, I just prefer black. He's going to have a definite black foot, and he's just got this one white stripe, so we'll, we'll dye it. I want you to put the white stripe on the foot. I, I've tried. <laughs> it's not, not easy. Those are the ones you just pump and dye it purple. Blue. Well, pink. If I had pink, I would. Really? But the heels come come up into a square. And uh, are we getting pink? I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll look out talking about cutting this heel. So it takes two seconds. But again, you want to cut the fabric because you can see how that's going to go up onto the hair. So you got two options. You can either like fold it up like this or cut it off. So the shears they make cut it very well, very easy. There's lots of things you can do if, if you don't have the shear, you can heat up a knife. We got green, we got blue. Uh, but okay. anyway, you we'll cut it with the heel, or you can get a piece of wire hot, lay it through it, or actually somebody showed me, uh, I can't remember where I was, but somebody showed me how to take it over the edge of an angle, and it'll cut the, the fabric if, if you don't have anything, you know, especially if it's your friend's angle. But, so again, we'll cut it like that, take it, and then peel it out. So the majority of the glue that we want is down in this this little groove. So again, I'll, I'll skip some some steps. I guess party line is cover all the fabric, but I'll just pull down the groove, cover this top, fold it up, press it together, just like squeeze it, cover the inside, cover the outside, wipe away the excess glue, and put it on. Okay, sound good? And then wrap it up. And then, so the wrapping process, I've already got it on there, but anyway, it'll go around the pasture, then it'll come around, and it, we always unroll like this. So you pull tight, wrap around, and I'll go widest point over the toe and kind of down and on to the shoe, and to the widest point, and back up and over to the pasture. So at least five of those, and then five straight up and over the heel. So you'll watch this, and you'll think I'm being willy nilly on how the wrap goes, and you'll think you just go out this stick wrap on it, but I promise this is this is what makes or breaks your shoe as far as going right where you want. Okay, so the, the glue on, whether it's gonna stay or not, comes down to the prep. Whether it's gonna go right where you want it or not, comes down to the wrap. Yes, sir. And I, and I will say, if you've never put these on, um, like when the shoe's still on there, like before you practice the strip wrap. Oh yeah, if practice it on the leg. Yep. That, if you can get yourself a urethane leg or a really good standing horse, if you can glue that thing on right there with no glue and wrap it in the right spot, you're good to go. Because then when you got glue, it just helps you. But if you're just going to smear a whole bunch of glue, and, and again, there's all these little idiosyncrasies. So even, even if you put this on the foot at the wrong time, and it's still liquidy and molding, wants to slide everywhere, it's a nightmare. Like, 
you'll get used to it and you'll find a time. It, there's a specific time that goes on the foot. There's a specific time that you blend it. There's a specific time that you do it all. Okay, um, but we're gonna go to the foot when it's tacky, but nowhere near getting chunky yet, but not runny. And so it's, again, like how do you, how do you describe that? So you'll just, you'll just get the feeling. Yeah, I think, I tend to think of it like, I like to get it to the consistency of uh, like thick vanilla icing. Like that, to where you could spread it nicely. That's the, that's what I'm going for to go on to the, to the shoe. And so I think for a size two shoe, six, six pumps will do it. Any of the, the dye. Oh, are we going black or green or pink? No, you could. Black, all right. So, oh, shoot. It's going to be in the derby. <laughs> <laughs> going in the derby. Like, where's green? The pony, Louisiana derby. <laughs> okay. So, you want, we'll stick it on here so you can see it. But, you know, again, a relatively, I got a size of a big pea. Put it on there. And then again, no matter the temperature, whether it's hot or cold, I think this is the one part you shouldn't skim. So, you can, this comes in any different thing. You can squirt it through a tip. You can do anything. I just stick it in a cup and mix it. Okay. It's slow set when you're doing that, right? I've got fast. I'm trying to get on with it. But, but we want to mix for, for a minute. But again, the, the slower it sets up, typically the better the bond. But but on a cold oh, rainy day like this. Oh, if you're if you haven't done this before, like like I said, when you're new to glue, it it sets up so quick you don't even know what, what you're getting done. Once you're good with it, I swear I can never get it set up as fast as I want. You know, but we're going to mix for, for a solid minute, you know, and, and fairly vigorously. Look, we're not just laying this like coconut. Like, get it get it stirred down the bottom corners of the cup or where you'll get in trouble. And so actually adding a dye, you know, it's kind of funny, but the, the white one, sometimes people don't get it mixed and don't know it. But if you have a color in it, it it's obviously got to go to the uniform color. Or if you see that bright white, you know it's not mixed. So we'll mix, like I said, there's a definite time you want it to go on. So usually I'm walking around, moving around, but, but while it's nice and liquidy, we want to blend it down into the to the groove or to the fold. So see all the way, all the way around, right? The next step is going to be just pulling it up and into the top fabric for me. And so again, it's gentle. Now I'm not trying to get rid of every every little bit of glue, but smear it. Fold this up, and then I'm just going to press it to together. So it's already holding itself. Right? And so then I'm going to cover the entire <laughs> inner edge. And this is the layer, if you want one with the slightly thicker than anywhere else, this is the place to do it. So make sure you have enough glue that it sticks. And all these little tabs just fold down <laughs> the line on the outside. We're just going to mix it into the, massage it into the fabric. I mean, you see how I just hold it with my left hand and my, my left hand will be, will be clean. And then we want to take all the excess glue out and away. Particularly anywhere is where you're, you're concerned, make sure it's gone. Okay. So hands relatively clean. Pick up his foot, and then again, I think right there is where most people forget to put glue. Even me knowing what I'm doing, you see that dirty spot? So I forgot to, or I didn't get all the way around to prep. You would like to, so I put it on the outer wall, and again, it should be starting to get thick and tacky. Okay, so lay it onto the foot, start at the toe, press to the to the heel. So there, you can see my fold. You can see how full it's going to be. So pull down and into it. I'll shut my, my gloves. And then anywhere where I think it's going to stick out, I'll lay glue. Okay. So anywhere where I'm fit for length and expansion. You know, I mean, you can sit here and make it look pretty if you want to, but I found it. I just need to get it there. So my wrap will handle everything else. So start around the pasture. It's locked, widest point to the toe. Catch it, pull up and over, 
over the pasture again. So you see, my shoe's not spinning, it's not twisting, I'm not fighting it. You know, it's locked now. And so then I'll come straight up over the heel, and that's the one place. If I'm worried at all, I will put my thumb to hold it. Then again, so the way I'm laying the fabric on here, it's building that, that bell shape for the, for the glue for me the whole time. So I want at least five through the toe, at least 10 through the heel, and then I'm gonna cover the fabric. But not in a way that's gonna mess up my heels, because I, I want those to be one nice big, big veil. Pop our wrap off. Okay, and again, know your know your horse. So if you're you're gonna set it down, if he's a par, or if he's a twister, or anything like that, you just want to hold it up longer. If he'll cooperate, we're gonna go down. Then we're gonna press all the fabric up and against the foot. Press out any excess glue. Roll this thing, but you can already see just the the shape of that. I'm gonna not push it too hard. I'm going to push glue into, into the areas where we need extra extra glue to make a nice nice little bell shape. Have anything where it won't uh, get caught by the, by the horse. And so now we just wait. And it should, should be done from the time I started stirring in six to eight minutes. But you can hold your cup, but this is another benefit to this is you get to put it down. So any the direct glue things, you, you likely want to hold them up until, until it's set. But if they move a lot, or if they twist a lot, like particularly the horses that you put down and do this number, will twist on top of the shoe. So those are the ones that are, are really the, the concern. Um, but if they stand like this guy, lightly sedated, you're in good shape. And so you know, I never put it on in these. You know, I mean, I have, but I didn't notice a notice a difference. So again, the outer wall—if it's put on a prepped clean wall, I don't worry about it. I'll admit, almost all of my direct glues, I I add a real fine. Where you can see it right there in front of the gloves, a real fine copper sulfate powder to the glue. And you can I mean, you can add it right to the glue. I haven't I haven't noticed a problem with it not setting up or messing with a bond or something. So, any questions on the process? I'll really explain them before we do the next foot. Anything jump out at you that I forgot to say or do? Nope, all makes sense. If you're, when you're strict about it, if that thing starts to get a little bit catting off the thong, you yep. can really Yeah, you can back. change it around. It's just like nailing on a shoe. You know, you, you get to the point where as you're nailing, you, you know how you can kind of move move shoes around. Same thing with, with wrap. The way you wrap it will change, change how it moves. Um, and you do have a point that you can twist it and get it right back in place. And you have a point where you can't, you just can't twist it, you can't touch it. So, unfortunately, experience will tell, teach you when that, that point is. And oftentimes, I'll admit when it happens to me, I just kick it in the right place I want it, wrap it up, and then see. Because it, if it's just, I'm setting it up in the wrong place, who cares, I'm gonna take it off anyway. At least it's got a fighting chance if I put it in the right place and wrap it up. Because right or wrong, these, these can't be reused. So once glue hits that fabric, it's going on this foot, or somebody just bought a, Series one. So it's either me or the owner, but somebody just bought an extra shoe. You know, so so I think it's it's best to, to do it and it's best to, to practice it with somebody and practice the wrapping or practice on a horse that is not of a, a big concern. And, and again, just be patient. It's just just like when you start out making shoes or nailing shoes or anything, it's it's just muscle memory and a, and a thing you're gonna make mistakes, it's not not the end of the world. So don't just ride it off immediately because the first one didn't go well. You know, I mean, the first shoe ever, you ever made didn't go well. The first one you ever nailed up didn't go well. But, yeah, you got it right off the bat. That was the only one. Yeah. Oh, that was the only one. Yeah. 
I got you. I'm on the road. It's all downhill. Start at the top. Yes, sir. Uh, well, for demonstration purposes, obviously something was was going to get glued up. Uh, originally, we thought about maybe doing a direct glue and, uh, and a series one, but you saw that big hole in the, the heel, and I didn't really want to get into taking that out, prepping it, treating it, soaking it. And then again, I would tell you party line if you can treat it, bandage it up, wrap it for a couple days, then glue. But that rarely ever gets to happen. Lots of times we just do it and hope, right? But of course, it'll be a demo horse in Kentucky that it goes terribly wrong. So <laughs> we're going safe in front of people on Facebook Live of all things. I can't have okay. yeah. horses <laughs> coming up lane. Do you know how many Facebook fairs would be on me? Try to spread glue right over that hill. You know what's going to add to this? Oh, I can't wait to hear the comments from the Facebook crowd. Yeah. And so here you can see this is obviously a different different foot. Its heel base is already way back here. It's slightly slightly lower. But again, a nice, a nice shape, nice thick wall. Thoroughbreds get such a bad rap, but this one has a relatively nice, nice little foot. Is this little guy lane sound comfortable? Sound works all day. He's, he's better than me. <laughs> but this one obviously doesn't really have the same same bruising. He's got this this little defect or little area right here. And again, all those things you can't just smear glue over that and think it's going to be okay. You can't smear glue over that and think it's it's going to be okay. So the prep work for direct glues are are pretty intensive. You'd like to, to make the foot spotless. And again, I'm not a real big over, over frog trimmer, but I do like to, to get the sulk eye clean, have a nice place for the shoe to sit. And those series ones with that, that little pad, I'll show you on, on feet like this where the heel almost touches the frog, the blue will, will often touch the frog. And you can just kind of recess it, like uh, kind of like a little onion peel. You just fold down the, the inside just so they, they don't hit. How much benefit to clean up the tracks? These? All these things? If you're, for, for me, if I'm just going to put a series one on it, I don't really worry about them too much because they're just going to grow, grow out. But if you're going to direct glue it and you're going to put glue on the bottom, you got to get rid of all this, which is why we, we cut the toe real quick and decided to series one this guy. That makes sense? So, I mean, you can direct glue, like put on an aluminum shoe, like all the way to the ground and just have glue from the, the heel back. You know, you could get just a normal aluminum shoe on there with the big clips like that, the hands. There's, there's lots of other ways you could, you could glue it. You're going, but, you're going layer shoe back on that foot. Oh, I, I think depending on who you are, probably a lot. But I mean, you can just feel this foot. I mean, it's just it's soft and wet as we as we speak. And so I do think. I mean, if you were to trim this guy, burn it, clean up all these things, and then nail it up, you'd be in be in good shape. I mean, there's there's lots of products that you could put in there from the Caretex and copper sulfate to the FPDs got that little nail hole disinfectant. Lots of things you could do to try to keep this clean, but. In my area, this time of year, this is what feet look like, you know. And so, right, right or wrong, I mean, I, I just kind of ignore it and kick on. But I grew up in the mountains of North Carolina, but I live in Southwest Virginia right now, and it's it's rained every day this week. So I mean, I, I deal with a lot of feet that look just just like this, you know, like weak. Well, I shouldn't say weak, but wet, kind of, not, not really flared out, but not just, didn't give you that appearance that it's a big, strong, you know, dry, hard, hard foot. And then these little guys, I'll admit, they, usually I will trim both feet, prep both feet, glue both feet, and then cut this off. But the horses don't like this thing, especially the way I wrap. 
the nine, nine rep. I mean, you can see the tension in it. I, I rep pretty, pretty tight all along the, the pasture and the heels. So again, I would strongly advocate taking them off with a pair of bandage scissors. But now for everybody to see how I just get glue there, and it fills, fills all that in. And I just take away any, any excess. But it's a, a nice little way to, yeah, so everybody can see the excess. So again, you can spend the time making it pretty, but once I start wrapping it, it moves. So if I just get it to where I want it, wrap it up the way I do, it makes that, that kind of bell. But here's all, all the excess. So again, I could have spent time making it pretty, but that's awful quick. It makes a nice, nice little bell, bell shape. And again, the, the electrical tape is, is what I use because you'll see it peels off pretty much nice and clean. So the, that wraps in the, the, the co-flexes and elasticons and all those things, the glue will kind of penetrate through it. And, uh, so I just, I just like so it peels off and makes a, a decently clean, clean border. Have you ever took the out by uh, I haven't. I know Curtis definitely... I I just haven't ever never done it. Probably should once just to try it. But but what Pat's asking is some people will take super glue and put it over top of it. From what I understand it comes back looking just like that. Nice and shiny. I a nice feel little, the, little like the edges and yep. stuff too. You know, it, it just keeps everything. Seals everything. Because it's and it's not uncommon if you don't get a nice bond here or where I ripped out that piece of, of tape, you'll get little things of dirt debris that'll pack pack right there. But it's one of those things I just, I haven't done it. I know it is done. Perhaps it, it's one of those things I probably need to do, to try. If I, yes, so if it's really wet, a torch is a nice thing, but, but I like, again, I, I probably, maybe I pump too much or maybe I'm just getting cranky, but if it's real, really wet, I just, I just sit at home, put it in the stall, I'll come back tomorrow, or, uh, or just warn them that this this may not be the best best bond. And, the, and I found the the hardest part is when you're going from a shock foot with nail on shoes that's wet to glue. You know, I, I'll admit a lot of times, like our horses have been teaching her, they live out in the field and they'll come out wet. I'll peel the the outer glue off, and the outer wall is pretty pretty dry. But but yes, if you're if you're worried at all, torch it, dry it, or do it another day. But if you're smart, set yourself up for success. I would uh, have them just put him in a stall the, the night before, or the day before, or now something. They're, they're saturated. You can have them up in any kind of um, Just stall, yeah, just in a, in a dry stall. If it's if it looks like it's not going to be a dry stall, you know, some sort of drying bandage, you know, just dry four by fours, things like that. You know, I would admit I, the moisture. I, I really never have a problem with it. The, the problem I have is people bringing in horses that are sore-footed or, or have lost shoes from other people because I'll admit one of my biggest businesses is just gluing up horses through the summer that other farriers are tired of trying to nail or they lose a lot of shoes. And so the, big, the biggest problem I have is when people come in and they've got the foot pack of magic cushion. That is hell to get off and, and get ready to accept glue or adhesive. That works for a good use of torch. Oh, I bet. <laughs> So again, just like if we were going to nail it up, we're just going to trim down to a nice, healthy hoof. There's nothing real, real crazy. knock off the, the edge quite a bit just so they don't cut through through my fabric.
nice when they're pretty close out of that. You know, and these things you can change their shape quite a bit, but it's not like nailing on a shoe, so you can get away with a lot if you want to get the base that you envision, get the shape shape you want, the, the ideal the ideal thing you want in your mind is it's now your time to do it. This one doesn't seem to have that same twist, so we'll fit it fairly normally. Anybody want to see, feel, look at it before we go to grind? good question. So a lot of the a lot of the glue ones, um, you know, you can rasp them and blend them and make them look look nice. So this one, that first roll of rack, that, that first pass makes it abrasive. And then blending it and making it it smooth. This, this if you well I mean I finish up somebody wants to pick up a hill the rasp and see what it looks like. You're welcome to it. But it it will fray, it looks you can't really make it look nice. And I've done everything from try to put extra glue on there and, and make it look look nice or, or change it. It just doesn't seem to seem to work. So everybody got a chance to look at it? Would anybody fit it any different if you were to nail it up? There's nothing that outrageous, that unagreeable. Yeah, yeah a little closer if you were nailing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the overreach on a walking horse, and, and again, with this with this type of hill shape, I mean that one's that one's asking to be be pulled. You know, I mean, if you were to hunter fit it, you'd have that late breaking wrap into the into the quarter, and kind of a kind of a hard bend. So this, you can just make it a little more gentle, and give it the the base in our mind that we think is perfect. And now that part could be argued, but but certainly the filling it in with glue eliminates a lot of the the shoe loss. Issues or concerns. Bob, you take anything out of here you need. Pat, Pat said you could just have it all. You know? There's just rice plates in there. Nobody wants those. Okay, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Now you should tell everybody about that little heel check thing. That's nice. <laughs> All right. So again, just like last time, we rounded it up. Oh, you can go ahead. Do, do whatever you guys want to do. And I'll take it off if you want to. <laughs> you know, but, but with the ones, I tell you, I mean, this looks a little chaotic and like a little bit of a hodgepodge, but you want to make yourself a system because you'll forget, you'll forget steps. So. You know, there's nothing worse than sticking this on a foot, holding it up, got glue covered in it, and then go, well, where's my wrap? There's nobody, nobody around. So, so usually I go to the foot with a cup of glue in my hand, the wrap under my arm, and I'm stirring. So I've got both, both with me moving towards the foot. All right. If I, but, yeah, now that's what I say. You gotta gotta make yourself a system. So so usually the second I get done shaping the shoe, I throw it on my box and then buff the foot. So I never walk away from it. Because usually 
once I go shape a shoe and get it ground and it's ready to go, I I want to walk from my anvil and catch the uh, all the glue supplies and then go go right back to it. But yeah, super glue does make it look shiny. It's nice. Quick, somebody touch it. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't get stuck. Oh, it dries that quick. That's awesome. And so again, just like that last one, I mean, I forgot that very back corner. When you've got a quarter that wraps this hard, you want to get all the way, all the way back there. You know, and again, this this kills all the like farrier school instructors because you don't want to stay on the the foot. This is one time where you basically go hoof stand surfing. You don't want your dirty apron touching the foot. So all those little things, you know, you kind of you start to hold back here and just. Let it set up. And then again, some people will rinse with denatured alcohol or acetone or any number of things. You can or you can't. I've never really noticed a plus minus either way. What did you say? With the acetone? Yeah, no, it could. Yeah. No, it's one of these things. I mean, this is not a short sweet process, so you'd like to simplify it as much as you can. So we already cut the heels on our, our fabric. We've got our, our shoe ready. You know, and again, this is a time as we move into the spring and the summer, you know, warn your clients because as you walk away, they think that's the perfect time to fly spray their course or <laughs> do something to them. So just make sure they don't do that. You know, it's a good time to think about not letting them feed another horse right at this critical moment. You know, not take 10 more out of the barn. This is a fairly crucial time. And like I said, I usually have that over my arm, that under my arm, so I've got them both. And I'm walking from my anvil or cart to the horse stirring the glue. But you want to have it with you so you don't forget to get apart. So this one, everybody wants to switch. We're all one hand dominant, right? But when you're wrapping, if you're wrapping off a roll like this where you can't twist it, you wrap with your right hand in one and your left hand on the other. You just can't, can't flip it. Do this on heels, all your stuff rolls away. You know, but again, feed it down into the into the to the groove or the the fold. Hey, at least I use black. And this humidity man is stuff to turn around the room. I think so. On days like this, mine turn greener than other days. See what it looks like when it's, when it's fit full. Again, some people 
don't like to make that little, little fold. They think it like limits expansion. Actually. So this one will just glue up, no extra. And you can see the difference. So you can start at the toe, but it should be pretty tacky. And you see I'm not chasing my shoe around. It's not running away. And if back at the heel, Travis, you end up with too much, or like if you didn't cut enough of the Kevlar off, yep. you can just fold it back on. Oh, yeah, yeah, just fold it over on itself and make it nice and thin. Honestly, I know a lot of people that never even cut it. They just fold it however they want. So catch the widest point to the toe, widest point. But it, you see it's kind of a down and onto the foot. It's not really trying to crank my shoe, shoe back, but if you come up here and catch that heel, it'll want to twist. So now is my last time to orient exactly where I want. And at least 10 straight up and over. But that system keeps me from having to chase my shoe around. It doesn't move very much. It keeps my sole open. So, you know, if I'm in a big hurry and want to pack it, you can kick on now and go. If you've got extra glue everywhere, you can wipe it out. You can see down, make sure you've got wall contact. It's thin enough, you can see the point of your frog. I'm looking at your two heels, trying to stay centered on it. So ways to, to kind of orient your, yourself. And then just smooth the blend to a, a nice finish. And if you were gonna echo pack it, would you fill in that whole sole and then put the hole in the back? Or? Um, you, you could do anything, yes. Yeah, so I would. I would I'm talking about the stretch wrap. Would you like the whole? Me for out? this, what I if I was if I'm in a hurry and needed to to go, I would just go ahead and throw my copper sulfate in that big hole. So I need the hole hit everything, on board it, and punch a hole in the plastic wrap and pour it and let it come. Because again, I'm a little weird. Like I like to make the either straight across the back a nice thing, or if I use duct tape, kind of long and almost egg bar shaped with. With the echo pack you'll see like this little line i mean i do it sometimes but, but i prefer everything back here to look like that one big bit so if i were to echo pack it mostly it'd have that big round look to it all right so you've seen it twice now any questions anything different you see they're they're almost robot like like you get and it needs to be a, very much a system Sound good? Could you start sharing back here and add one thing? Uh, yeah, no, I think you could kick on, so, so I'll admit, maybe you can go ahead and pick them up, trim them, chew them, do whatever, whatever you need to do. Just think about your, your horse. So if it's one, you're doing it cross ties, and you know, every time you walk to your angle, it walks down at cross ties, and pops them, and then walks back. Stay with it. You know, if it loads and twists, stay with it. You know, no. Know your horse, obviously. I don't know. Know this guy. But he's got the right amount of training on him. Stands up a champ. Yeah. You know, but the, the things that'll get you are the twist or the ones that, um, like if they'll do, do that, I've never really had a problem. So when they come back and flex like this, They'll just shoot the shoot out in front of them. Yeah, sure. As long as I, so I try to usually I'll put them down almost like that, like in front of themselves. They want to stay there. But if they do this and they try to lock, they slide out of it like a foot lock. Is there a reason you use the three inch wrap instead of the five for that? Oh, for these I just like the the, the three. It's just what I use. The only time I've ever used a five is uh, with that sheet. Okay. The one told me about that. It's, I mean, it works nice for those. Actually, the first time I did it, I didn't have a three inch. There's a lot of things to those hands I was supposed to do the first time. <laughs> Call up Pat, please, and hell. Can't get this plastic off. It looks horrible. So, yeah. Especially for plastic plastic. Plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so be it.
So again, all these things, I mean, yes, I jokingly willy-nilly just go out and do them, and I, and I think you should to a certain extent, but it's all the little idiosyncrasies that even having watched this demo, you won't notice or recognize until you've got it in your hand and you go. So if you can go to anybody that does any of this and just do one with them, again, I mean, it doesn't bother me at all for guys to come to me and trip with the one on. You know. I was going to say, if yeah. anybody wants to, no. I got six horses for the house. Yeah. So, I mean, no, I, I think it's a good, good not thing. Not Shelbyville, so you yeah. want to come do yeah. whatever. Yeah. Thank God I don't have to chew on Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody should come glue on at least one horse every month. Yeah. No. <laughs> That'd be the way to do it. But again, I mean, that, it's it's something. Yes, I we glue on shoes, but I, I still nail on a lot. I just shoe a lot of normal shoes as well. Like I'm not saying it's something that needs to take over over the world, but I do think it's in everybody's best interest to have it in the tool bag. It's like I, I think it's wrong, or I, I don't think it's in everybody's best interest to not know how to pull a clip, not know how to punch a nail hole, not know how to glue on a shoe. We like nails. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's good. Yeah. For every two back blocks you turn it to Bob, he'll give you four boxes of nails. <laughs> Put them out of business. <laughs> Buy that program. Or, or it's actually, she asked uh, how well they stay on. They stay how on well do you stay on? Wet well, again, on under wet conditions, like today, like putting them on wet, I, I wouldn't bet anything. Oh, work, working in the wet, I, again, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot for one of these days. But I guarantee, whatever the shitty weather is, they will stay on until somebody takes them off. I uh, maybe one or two come off a year, but it's it's not very many. Um, I well, I brought the stuff I didn't know. I mean, obviously, I think this horse needs to leave in shoes, but um, I think the easiest way in the world to take them off is with a box cutter. So I know it seems a little sketchy to have a box cutter on a horse, but I keep it in my right hand because that's my dominant hand, and on this side, you know, I'll grab the heel, and you saw how long and full I fit it. So like half on the shoe, half off in the in the shoe pullers, put tension on it, and then bite with the knife right behind um, or right in between the foot and the blue, like that blue pad. So you're just trying to sever the fabric. And I just go down, because it's down and away from me, till about you know the 11 o'clock position. So I come just beyond the toe, and then I either grab this side of my shoe pullers and flip it over, or uh, the whole thing uh, and actually while this chair is because there's some confused looks looking at me if you could see this screen i'll show you a quick little video on how to how to pop this thing off because again everybody everybody thinks it's like this long lengthy process uh, it really won't be all right, so everybody ready? I think this is like 10 seconds. So I'm going to grab with the shoe pullers and the heel, box cutter down, cut to about there. So you're never cutting back up at you or the horse. Roll it over. And then that breaks that heel, so it makes it really easy to peel. And then just peel it right around. So I think that's the easiest easiest way to take them off. I know a lot of people will use a towing knife, or they will. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people that will rasp right at the junction of the, the fabric and the and the shoe, and then try to cut it with a knife or rasp all the way through it. But this is just too quick and easy. And again, I'm, and that that's taking too long. So that's a dull dull blade. Should, should go quick. Yeah, it's like skin. So you want to, the tension is what makes it cut real easy. So you, you're, it's pointless. I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, well, that's something else in my hand. But there's no point in like holding my foot and trying to box cut. Like get tension on the fabric. Yeah, the whole that's what's peeling off. So all that's left on that thing is just a very thin layer of glue between the foot or on the outer wall of the foot. But that that's peeling motion from the side is peeling the whole fabric off. So that's the funny thing about glue. The second you can twerk it, it just lets go. Nice.
Sound good? Any questions? Huh? He's moving. He's moving. Give me more drugs. <laughs> now they they hate this, so so the, the fabric again, usually by the time like that one, if if I'm doing it in pairs, so this one will be wrapped up, you know, I'll put the glue on this one, wrap it up, and then I'll immediately pick that one up and go ahead and cut it off. And if if you never glue any of the hinds, you know like where they get real hypermetric when you like put shipping boots and stuff on them, they do the same thing with this wrap. And, They'll hurt you, they'll hit you in the face. I, I honestly never found one that I could glue up and wrap behind and keep moving. Like I had to wait till it's set up, take the, the wrap off, and then glue up the other, the other foot. But now with this one, you can see exactly how, how full it is without having the extra glue put, put into it. You can see the the extra the extra shoe, but again, even that's really hardly anything to, to worry about. But it's just like you would have one nailed on. I mean, you got your your width, your expansion, you bevel it off. So the guys, I mean, yes, some people will put on who want shoes that are just too too small, and, but it's just like everything else. The the shoe should the foot should fit into the shoe. Then you can do a lot of things. Like I said, I mean, you can throw in a little frog insert if you think the frog's too high off the ground. You can equal pack on, you can heel plate on, you can do all kinds of things. Because it is, I mean, it is a half inch shoe. You know, but. Hey, Travis, how, yes, how do you go about talking about doing heel plates? Is that how you do heel plates? Um, heel plates? So the, the way, so you got two options. So you, if you're just wanting to make like a thin little strip, I would just take a, uh, Chisel, straight chisel, put this on your anvil, and then chisel straight through the urethane down to the aluminum, and then stick it in. Honestly, uh, Gene's vise is the best thing, because it's double jaw. So you stick it in one jaw, and then this sticks against the other jaw, you take the chisel and just separate the urethane. And so you'll have, and then if you have a quarter inch plate, just lay across it, drill it, uh, and if you get like quarter 20, like uh, flat head screws, you can drill the plate with your normal 516s and countersink, and that fits the head of the, the flat head screw, and then just drill and tap the aluminum for, for quarter 20, screw it together. And you can do anything you want. So you can have a little heel plate, you could cut it out and make a frog, you could make an egg, make a straight bar. The only thing it does is it doesn't make it to the ground, but it will keep a one flat even surface on, on the foot. So if you're like, let's say you're gonna cut out, you know, a big quarter of this to flow to heel, you can run a bar from heel to heel, so it doesn't just lift up and into the into the shoe or into the foot. Yeah, no, you can put the the vet tech mesh in here. You can put flat pads in here. You can put frog pads. You can put all sorts of things. Honestly, if you go in there, the castle plastic little road pad, it's exactly a half an inch thick right here at the frog. Stick this on there, and then you've got your frog on the on the ground, nice and even. You know, and you can put them on. You can pack with silicone. You can do anything. So, so all the glue on shoes. Again, I, I'd say it. Everybody needs to get away from the. Oh my God, it's it's a piece of it's gluing on the shoe. It's it's just another form of attachment. You can still do, and you should do all the things. So if you know that foot needs a heart bar, and you can't nail it. Hell, don't just glue up something that's not a heart bar. Find a way to give it the heart bar. You know, but if you can't safely and securely nail, or if you're having a compromised fit for nailing, or if you're doing this under general anesthesia, or doing it to a blocked horse, or doing a sedated horse, all those are great indications for the use of a, a glue on shoe. What, uh, what uh, tricks do you have for uh, keeping your mesh in place? You go to glue what tricks for gluing for your mesh in place? A couple things so you can. Uh, super glue this and set it down in there. You can staple gun it down in there. Or for me, I just lay it on the foot, lay this on top of it. But I've never been able to like lay it in here and take the whole thing over. I use spray adhesive. Yeah, spray adhesive is, is nice for most. And, and spray adhesive comes in very handy when you're, if you're going to use Echo Pack, 
the spray adhesive does a nice job. You can spray the whole foot, throw them in a bunch of copper sulfate, and it stays right where you want it. And I swear it helps the Equipack bond bond better. So spray adhesive is great, great. Have you ever tried? And I've been taking this around, mm -hmm. and I've never done it. No. Oh shit! We got two more feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 On on those horses that you feel they're just and this is I've never done. You know, you feel like the walls are just coming apart, mm -hmm. and it's getting a little bit too thin. And you're scared to, you know, um, and it, it may be a little. Have you ever thought about saturating with super glue and gluing through that? I have. I was thinking like I mixed some copper sulfate up super glue the other day. Yeah. Ratting like this. Yeah. Mail it. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I wonder if I could do that on the outside wall. Just yeah. Glue it on the you might could. I was hoping you could. Yeah. No, I had, I, so I had bad experiences. You know, again, the, the glue on shoes are something you know, that I've played with most of my, my career. And I had bad experiences with uh, the most bad easy glues when they were still being made. You, those first things were designed to just put on with uh, this basically super glue. You know, I spent hours like prepping these things, put all those little tabs on the super glue. I'd get like five fingers stuck to it. Rip it off, stand back, think this is beautiful, and then hand that thing and make it like three feet chuck. So, so I've been a super glue hater ever, ever since, just yeah. from that standpoint. But, but I do like how shiny this is, because um, I do try to aim for that. And there's a perfect time, you know, a perfect heat to where it kind of melts that on and makes it shine. Because you guys didn't super glue that, one, right? Yeah. So that that's just the plastic wrap on it. And I, I'm happier when they come out and peel it out looking like, like that. I don't mind. It's, it's pretty. But that's all getting it on at the right time, <laughs> at the right tension, and then rolling. So most likely, the first time you put it on, you're going to have all the wrinkles from the wrap. It may look a little rough, but if the prep work was done right, it'll stay. But, but just remember, don't try to just rasp it in the, in the pretty. It won't, it won't go well. Any other questions on the glue on? What is the major reason you use a glue on shoe? The the number one reason is just simply the inability to safely and securely nail. I'll admit I, you know, it, it's not yet. Yeah, so I glue on a lot of horses right now that you know A I had a compromised fit or they have these white line resections or their chronic dynamics and everything just needs to be closed those up. But you know, in my, in my area, July, August, September, you know, when shoes are being chucked left and right, there's not much to nail into. Like, and I'm very lucky, a lot of areas just send me horses just to glue up for one or two cycles, and then they go right back to being nailed the rest of the year. And so, you know, again, my, one of my very first times doing this, one of the biggest reasons was I'd go out to a, to a foot. You know, I wasn't confident in nailing, you know, when I was young, know, like still in high school, and, you know, I baby nailed everything. And I didn't understand how big of a difference it made if you're nailing the white line versus the wall. So, so if I had a shoe come off, like my wall was gone, and there was really nothing else to nail to. So, most commonly, that's how I kind of got started gluing on shoes. And I'd glue them on and leave them for you know eight, ten weeks, just grow out a whole bunch of foot. And oftentimes, I mean, I'd have the other foot nailed up, and then take it off and try to nail it. So. So mostly it's just the inability to safely and securely nail. But then I'd say the next biggest reason is, you know, a lot of chronic laminitics that I just dress back too hard, or not too hard, but hard enough that you kind of want to reinforce it a little bit. You want to keep it closed up so the white line disease and abscesses can't happen. Um, you know, I do shoot a lot of sedated horses, a lot of horses that come for, you know, a lameness exam and they're blocked. And you got to ask yourself, are you comfortable nailing on a shoe to a horse's block. And it really only takes that one bad experience to change your mind. Of course, he's under general anesthesia. You know, when a horse lay on his back, a horse will come and see his feet are flopped up like this. It's a different feeling when you're standing on a table straddling the belly of a horse trying to drive a nail. You know, so glue is just easy. So there are a lot of times, but, but don't get me wrong. I mean, I, hell, I still nail up at least half the time more of the horses we do. Any other questions on? 
Our, do we have hot? Should we shoot a hot feed of this? Yes, yeah, sure. Everybody wants to? All right. Let's shoot a hot feed of this one. Because I thought I'd do whatever we didn't get done. So I thought oh, I'd shoot. So he's, he's getting the shoes. <laughs> I don't care if you put racing plates back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that is something I've never done. You want to? Oh. I would like to come to Kentucky and play golf. There we go. And you said he's going to Derby? <laughs> he won't do anything over there? No, he works every day. Oh, shit, that's it. I'll tell him. I'll put my horse in there. charges from nail on to glue on. I think you covered that earlier. Uh, yeah, so, so I think, and, well, obviously everybody's everybody's different, so let's just go about it uh, in a logical way. So first and foremost, the shoes on the sound horse are, if you go that, that route, are going to cost you at least $67 a pair, if not more, and then, um, then you've got the price of the glue on top of it. So I tend to rationalize it as I have 100 bucks and a and a pair of Series 1s, you know, from shipping tax to, to um, shipping tax, glue, all the, all the supplies there, so, so I mark up from there. So okay. For, for us in Southwest Virginia, just to, to go up the, the front pair of feet with, maybe about 245, something like that. No, so it, and it, it varies all over, you know, okay. depending on where it is. But, but I think a fair should look at it as what costs they have in it and make sure they get at least at least that, if not more. And I would tell you to strongly consider planning for the failures. You know, so have a little bit of an extra mark up in there so if something goes wrong, you know, it's, it's already built in. So if something goes wrong, maybe you lose your profit, but you don't lose money. You know, okay. if, that, if that makes sense. Yep, super. That's how, how I put it. But super. I'm going to wait. We might have to call Dr. Esco if we want to talk about money. Because I'll admit it's the, the business. And I mean, I work for a university, so I don't always, always uh, do it the same as some private affairs. For a while. You want me to keep them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Nobody here wants to see where the blood is. <laughs> Except for one person. <laughs> How many weeks is that? Uh, oh, ten weeks? Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 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 And so, again, just like, you know, the front feet, I tried it. But, uh, but a nice shape done that somewhat matches their, their white line. You know, it's, it's kind of a distorted foot. But, but I, I do see this a lot. So... And also with this like collapsed lateral that come way out and in, it seems like that quarter is always higher than than the other. So they almost always look like that. So it makes makes shoeing look a little little strange. Ah, oh, I don't know, maybe we have two, three, something like that. I might have to. I don't bring anything but ones with me. Some of the clips, Bob. The shoes now, they move too much. He will burn up the. Huh? He will burn. He will? Yeah. Oh, God. Or at least you told me he would. Oh, oh God. Are we telling you we've been working on blind horses the whole time? <laughs> half blind. Oh, half blind. Oh, half blind. Oh, that's what I should have told that guy all blue ones are free. Just today. You just do it for the love of the horse. Yeah. I just love them. Hey, are you bringing shoes the blue ones that that would like hands? You yeah, I'll have water in there. And they'll be I think they'll be like Mary Brown will be there. I mean there'll be a lot of different blue on shoes there. You know. And how you can look at my truck, I've got a lot of different gear on shoes. <laughs> I still run a ferry, but it's all said and done. You don't have one with clips to you. John, man, clips. You can have clips with you. Have you ever drawn a clip before? I haven't. Shit. I told you this is the first time I'm getting a shoe hunt. You're dying for young guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. We'll take it. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. There's some meat there too, huh? Yeah, I like it. I don't, I don't do a lot of pulling shoes. Is it that obvious? 
being mic'd up and you can't raise your Oh, hell, this is the first horse I've shot in a moment. What did you look at? Um, I did. I, mostly, I just look at the hoof capsule itself. So I see a nice, nice shape, a nice pretty white line. So this is big. This is real thin. And so I don't know if this is man-made or if this is him-made. But... I'm going to keep projecting that to here is his widest point. They come in at a slow, nice, nice even shape, and he's he's dubbed off. I assume he drags because it's it's pretty rough. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably maybe lightly lightly rocker him, or at least do this do this tool. If they're dragging, the first thing I do is rocker them. Um, not necessarily in the the terms of breakover, but more a thing that so when they're they're dragging, it puts it on a nice plane. It's like a little, little buffer for them, so you know fit them full in the rock room, so it's protected and um, but doesn't like put a big extension out there, which is a big big lever. But a lot of horses with you know hot mane or limited dorsal flexion drag their drag their feet. When that happens, their hoof capsule tends to well they just start to become front feet. I do like black hacks. You know, but I mean, but that's the the outer perimeter of this matches a front foot quite a bit, right? Yeah. So I keep on on hind feet to look like this. I try to just follow their their white line and truly try to cut a hind in kind of like that without overly overly thinning them. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, don't don't get crazy on them, but but if a few rash strokes and I can get that kind of shape into it, I'm much much happier and I think the overall health of the horse's hoof capsule is is better. But you can see if he drags all that is so. Yeah. So this guy's got work for a living. Thank you. 